So reproduction, what do you think? How do they reproduce? Asexual, sexual, or maybe something else? What do you think? Well, let me show you. Yes. Vegetative, asexual, sexual. All of these modes are possible in fungi. So there are different categories which perform vegetative, different categories which perform asexual, and there are some other categories which can perform sexual mode. Some also can perform asexual and sexual both. Well, so now we'll talk about the vegetative one. Okay, vegetative form. What happens? Let's see. This can happen in these ways, the fragmentation, budding and fission. Well, I'll show you. Don't worry. I'll show you. So first, let's talk about fragmentation. Fine. F so fragmentation. What does this mean? Fragmenting. So something will get fragmented. Let's see what happens. So first we'll talk about fragmentation. Yes, see this image over here. So the hyphae, it gets fragmented. And later on, all these fragments, they will start forming the mycelia. Okay, they'll grow, they'll start forming mycelia. So this is an example of a vegetative mode of reproduction by fungi. And this is known as fragmentation. Next, what will we talk about? So we talked about fragmentation, now budding. Budding, what did we talk about previously? We had talked about budding previously also. Budding, yes, see this. Again, you have to follow one particular cell and then you'll understand. See, what is budding? What is happening is, see, one cell, yeah, yeah okay, one cell, there's a small outgrowth which, which is growing. Those are known as bud. And these buds, they start keep on growing, growing, and eventually they detach and become an independent organism. Well, so this is budding. Next, let's talk about the next one. Fission. Yes, fission also, I am sure you know this. But again, you have to observe this carefully. Observe it carefully, how and what is happening. Fission is basically the process in which, you know, what happens. So here, the cells, they grow the genetic material, they divide, they replicate, and then it is passed on to the two new organisms, two new cells rather, I should say. And then it pinches of it, separates. So this is fission, nuclear fission. Okay, so, sorry, not nuclear fission, or rather, I should say, this is the vegetative mode of reproduction, which is known as fission. Well, so these are the three types of vegetative reproduction that is observed in fungi. That is fragmentation, budding, and fission. Well, now let's talk about the asexual mode. Yes, because I told you, fungi is capable of doing all these three. Asexual mode. Well, now you have to start remembering few things. You have to start remembering few things. Asexual can happen through these spores. That is the sporangiospores, the conidiospores, and the oidia. Sporangiospores, conidiospores, and oidia. Sporangiospores can be of two forms, zoospores, Zoospores, which are motile, which can move. And aplanospores, which are non-motile, it cannot move. So again, vegetative, we talked about fragmentation, budding, fission. Next, asexual. Now we're going to talk about sporangiospores. Then we are going to talk about conidiospores and oidia. I'm going to show you what are these and how these structures look like so that you can associate and relate and remember. Sporangiospores, two types, motile, that means zoospores. And non-motile, these are aplanospores. So, let's talk about it. So, asexual reproduction occurs with the help of asexual spores. Asexual spores. Important. Very important. The spores are haploid. They are thick-walled. They are resistant structures. Spores are resistant structures. Spores germinate to form new organisms. Now, let me tell you some important and uh, really interesting characteristic feature of these fungi and why they form these spores. You know, what? So fungi, you know, they rely on the spores for to reach the food sources. They rely on the spores. There are about, I think, thousand species of these fungi which can produce spores which can swim. Okay, they can swim. There are other spores which cannot swim, but they can move with the help of the water current, the air current. Okay, so the spores which generally move uh, through the air currents 
they have a waxy or an oily coating so as to prevent the loss of water because they the spores have to be viable right so till the point it reaches a proper food source it has to be alive it has to be viable so there's a waxy coating again at times some spores have hook like extensions hook like so why why hook like because of the fact you know what will happen so these spores can easily get attached to animals the bodies of the animals and then it can move because they cannot move them by themselves so they have hook like extensions fine the problem is only a tiny percentage of all these spores can actually reach a proper food source that's the reason fungi always have to produce huge number of spores that is beneficial for fungi but that's not beneficial for us and you know that is the re that is actually the reason why even if you keep your room clean always always if you even uh, keep your room clean then also if you keep the food outside it gets spoiled the fungus grows you know why because it's present in the air yes it's present in the air so very important characteristic feature is the formation of these asexual spores great now now we'll be talking about the sporangiospores and let's talk about the zoospores well they are motile why because they are flagellated flagella yes you see the the diagram over here so this flagella it helps in the movement it provides it helps the spores to move that's the reason they are motile and they produce in structures remember this they are produced in structures which are known as the zoosporangium and endogenously what do you mean by endogenously that means from within it's produced within the cells okay within the structures within the organism body of the organism it's not produced outside the body of the organism within endogenously okay great so sporangiospores and there we are talking about zoospores which are flagellated that's the reason they are motile they they produced in the structures called the sporan zoosporangium and they are produced endogenously from within next aplanospores these are non-motile because yes of course they don't have so they are non-motile because of the fact they don't have flagella now now they are produced in structures called aplanosporangium and again endogenously from within from inside so basically what we understand is both the types of sporangio uh, the sporangiospores that is the zoospores and the aplanospores they are produced endogenously now let us talk about the next one that is conidiospores great conidiospores the difference with the sporangiospores is that they are produced exogenously from outside see the diagram you will understand they are produced exogenously from outside see this conidia this structure you know these are formed on these spores are formed on branches and these are called the conidiophores conidiophores right and these are the conidiospores fine these are the conidia great so these are produced exogenously if difference is asked sporangiospores and the conidiospores conidiospores are produced exogenously sporangiospores are produced endogenously now next we'll talk about oidia this is a simplistic one you won't forget this formed by the fragmentation of high fat high fat times get fragmented this may be because of some physical forces or because of some other reason these fragments these are called oidia these are referred to as oidia and they can later on grow into organisms okay well so now we talked about the sexual mode what about the sexual mode yes so sexually with these spores oospores zygospores ascospores basidiospores well what i'll do is I won't in detail talk about these spores individually, but we are going to cater to these spores, this mode of reproduction, when I'm talking about the classification of fungi. That's important. Then you can easily relate to it because sexual reproduction in fungi is really, really important. And now comes the interesting part of the sexual reproduction in fungi, and it's this. Let's see what's this. So please take a look at this diagram carefully, and now whatever I'm saying, you have to pay full attention so that you understand this concept properly you have to understand this properly because loads of questions are asked on your examination need well you see here this is the mycelium 
Please note the ploidy. It's haploid number of number. Okay, one n. It's haploid. Fine. Now the first step here is plasmogamy. What does this mean? Plasmogamy that is the fusion of the protoplasm. Protoplasm of two compatible. Com, uh, protoplasm of two compatible hyphae. Right? Compatible hyphae. They fuse. The protoplasm fuses. Now, if the protoplasm fuses, the nucleus is there, right? The nucleus will be present over there. That's a stage called dikaryon. Karyon, you know, nucleus, di means two. C. Heterokaryotic stage. It's also at times called as dikaryon because in some species, during this fusion, after the protoplast has fused, instantly the nuclear fusion doesn't happen. That stage in which there is one single cell and there is the two nuclei, it's known as a dikaryon, right? Remember this. So, plasmogamy cells from two different mycelia fuse to form a dikaryotic cell. Yes, it's a dikaryotic cell, dikaryon. So, remember these words. Now, karyogamy, that is fusion of nucleus. Nuclei fuse to form the diploid zygote. So, it was haploid. Now, it has formed the diploid zygote. Now, now this zygote is going to perform meiosis and again form the haploid spores. So meiosis, yes, it's a representation of sexual mode of reproduction. Perfect. So yes, that's the reason I'm talking about the sexual mode of, mode of reproduction fungi here. So zygote, which was 2N, now after meiosis has become haploid and now it's again N or rather 1N as referred to here. Fine. Now these spores will germinate and the mycelium, the mycelia will be formed. Great. So this is the structure. This is the form. Quickly, let's revise. So first, what happened? Two compatible hyphae, they will be fusing together. The protoplast will fuse together. That is known as plasmogamy. Protoplast fusion. After protoplast fusion, there's a stage where the two nuclei are there. It has not fused yet. That is called a dikaryotic phase. Dikaryon. When, after that, the two nuclei fuses, it forms a diploid zygote. Now this zygote will undergo the process of meiosis, forms haploid spores and these spores will undergo germination and form later on form the multicellular mycelium is formed. Great. Well, now let's see one interesting thing. Types of gametic fusion. What are the different types? Let's see. Isogamy. Isogamy. Iso is means similar. So fusion of gametes which are similar. You see the diagram. So see those two are similar. Okay. That's the reason this type of fusion is known as isoga isogamy. Next, anisogamy. That means it's when two gametes fuse and these two gametes are not similar to each other. So fu fusing gametes, fusion of gametes that are dissimilar. There's a, another type which is known as oogamy where the female is large, it is non-motile, it doesn't have flagella, it cannot move. Okay, you see this image, this is the female. And the male gamete is smaller and it has flagella and can move. This is known as oogamy. So three types of gametic fusion. Isogamy, when the gametes are of the similar type. And isogamy, it is also known as heterogamy, where the gametes are not of similar types, they are dissimilar. Oogamy, when the female gamete is larger and it is non-motile. Male gamete is small and it is motile, it can move. Well, 